before we talk about the game, and I'll just uh, address number one, uh, our crowd and our student crowd. Uh, I think it was a record for our student section today at 13-5, which is amazing, and then the crowd in the Rose Bowl. Unfortunately, we couldn't give them a win, and that's really disappointing. I know to everybody that was in the stands, and certainly to us, um, there's nobody more disappointed than those guys in there. But I just want the people that are buying in, I just want to know we appreciate it and we notice it. It means something to us, and we're going to go out and we're going to keep fighting and try to invite you to keep coming back to the Rose Bowl. Um, the second thing is I understand that they caught me in brick, getting into it a little bit on the sideline. Um, I've known him since he was 21 years old, since he was just a little babe coming into the into the pro football world. He's one of my closest friends, and we are both very passionate and very competitive. And uh, if you don't have that fire, then something's wrong in this business. If you don't have that respect where you can have difficult conversations with each other, then something's wrong. And, you know, the last thing we think about during a game is where the camera is. Man, we're fighting to win, and we love each other dearly. He's one of my, like I said, one of my closest friends. He's one of the fiercest competitors that I've ever been around in my life. This guy played 10 years in the NFL for one team. You know how hard that is to do? That speak volume, speaks volumes for his character. And I challenged him a little bit, and he responded, and we hugged and made up. Well, we, we didn't have to make up, because that's just our relationship. And so uh, please don't read anything into that other than two guys that just die to win, uh, are passionate about football, uh, have a long history, and uh, that's all it is. Uh, you know, when you play a team like Oregon, you got to be almost perfect to beat them. They're just so explosive and so good. And um, I think that we did some things today that were really positive, but we shot ourselves in the foot a couple times. I think that the turnovers hurt us, certainly. You know, when you've got a team like that, you give them a short field, it's going to make it extremely difficult on your offense, or I'm sorry, on your defense. Um, you know, obviously, um, we've, got to, we've got to figure out how to put the ball through the uprights when we get ourselves in scoring position. We need those threes. Um, and uh, I'll let you ask questions from there. Jim, given the nature of the mistakes your team made, plus the significance of the game, plus the nature of the opponent, do you think your players might have been too amped up going into this, maybe not focused on the right things, anything of that nature? Um, what mistakes are you in particular speaking to? A couple of penalties um, that... Which had, ones in particular? I believe it was on the second... Uh, either Oregon's second or third scoring drive. I think they were a couple of personal foul penalties. Um, there was also a pass play that led to the interception when the receiver, uh, the intended receiver, almost got caught up with his, his own his own feet, this kind of thing. Okay, yeah, I think that, you know, when you, it's an emotional environment and, uh, you know, you need to play on that edge and sometimes you step over that edge and you got to be able to draw it back. Uh, and we did have a couple of cost of penalties. Uh, we've really improved in terms of penalties this year. I think you guys know that. I think going into this game, we were only third in the Pac-12 in penalties, which is a huge jump for us. But uh, I mean, you get keyed up, you know. Um, these are young men still. They're still growing. Some of them are kids still, you know. And part of my job is to try to teach them how to control their emotions at critical times, you know, and sometimes it's going to be a little bit messy. Um, I've never been in a football game where it isn't messy, you know, where there aren't emotions in, in play, where there aren't mistakes, you know, there's a human element to every competitive sport, so this isn't like you, you know, you're taking a test where, you know, the teacher says, turn off your cell phones, make it real quiet, pull out your number two pencil, I mean, there's a human element involved, and so we just got to keep working through those things and, and get better on the other end. Hey, Jim, um, with you and Rick, was it, the, was it the frustration of what was happening on the field defensively that kind of led to that? It's just the passion of the game. I mean, how many of you guys have been on the sidelines coaching a game ever in, at any level, whether it's peewees? Like, I go to my kids' peewee games, and coaches are argh, grinding, and it's a game in front of 12 fans, you know? If you're a competitor, which we are, then those things happen. That's life, and if you can't accept that, then then you shouldn't be doing this, you know. And if you're going to make a big deal out of it, 
then you don't understand sports. So I would hope no one would make a big deal out of something as stupid as that, because if they do, then they don't understand what competition really is, and they don't understand what passion really is. Uh, in the second quarter, Eddie looked like he threw a punch at the bottom of that pile, the personal foul penalty on Oregon's second scoring drive. Is that yeah, something I heard about him? that. The official came over and he told me that he, that he saw him throw a, throw a punch, yeah. Are you planning to talk to Eddie, or have you talked to I've him? I've talked to Eddie, certainly. I've talked to him immediately. Yeah, we addressed those things immediately. Is there additional discipline for him because of that? I would not think so. I mean, he didn't get penalized. We handle it in-house. And if there is, it, it won't be something that you'll you'll learn about. But uh, it's certainly not something we condone. It's not something that our players do. Uh, it happens. Jim, you yourself said that you think that you could probably absorb one loss, but you weren't so sure about two. I don't remember saying I, that we couldn't absorb two losses. You said you weren't sure. Okay. You weren't sure about it. Just given that and, and the what this game meant, what do you say to your guys now? It's like any loss. I mean, you pick yourself up, you dust yourself off, uh, you learn from your mistakes, you draw closer together, you lock out the noise more, you focus on the positives, you lean on each other, and you continue to battle. That's what you do. You know, this is a competitive sport, a competitive environment. We're a competitive team, and uh, no one's going to fold it up. You just keep fighting. That's the only option you have. you got two options, really. You can quit or you can fight, and we will choose to fight. Coach, uh, after the tackle with emotions and the human element, after a loss like this, what was the mood of the team as to the last week's loss? Uh, every loss is disappointing. You know, you put so much into it. These, you, these young men, they just, I mean, they, they just put so much into it. You know, and school started up now. This past week was their first real week of school, so there's that added to it. But they're disappointed, but they're, they're not defeated. You know, um, they're going to continue to work hard to get better. They continue to focus on on the positives and learn from the negatives, and we're going to come back out and we're going to battle next Saturday. That's that's what we do. But they were they were disappointed. We were all disappointed. You know, we this is what we do. This is our passion. This is our livelihood. This is what we love. And so when we don't succeed, it's uh, I, it, yeah, it, it's no fun. Coach Morrow, what was Oregon able to do in the first half to bottle up your offense? It looked like there was. Some opportunities there, but but the score didn't really reflect. Yeah, you know, we were able to move the ball between the 20s, and, and going into this game, we were, I, I believe we were one of the top two or three teams in the country in red zone offense, and we didn't get into the end zone, nor did we get it through the uprights like we needed to do to compete with a team like that. You know, I thought Brett making that play at the end of the first half to get it in the end zone and make it 21-10 was huge. Um, you know, we felt like if we could come back out in the second half, we had, the, you know, we were getting the ball to start the second half and take it down and, and score. We could get ourselves right back in it. They got us stopped, and then they went down and scored. So it switched real quick on us right there. Coach, um, um, obviously the, the defense got two big stops in the beginning, the first two drives. Um, but from that point on, Oregon pretty much moved the ball at will. Was it just a matter of you guys not executing, not adjusting? But, What's the reason for that? Well, first of all, I think you have to remember that Oregon's a really dynamic offense, probably one of the most prolific offenses in college football over the course of the last few years. And they've been doing their thing for a long time. They've got a great quarterback in Marcus Mariota. And, you know, there's not many games uh, that they play where they're held to, to little or nothing. I mean, they score points, they get yards, it's what they do. It's just it's, this Pac-12 is wide open. Um, but other than that, it's a little bit of everything. You know, it's them making plays. It's them having great athletes. It's them, uh, you know, catching the ball. It's us trying to get it right and maybe not getting it right on a play or popping a gap or uh, sometimes you get beat or not putting your players in the right position. It's everything. It's it's hard to – you can't just say it's one thing when you play that many plays. You know, it's, it's a lot of things. So I'm not trying to avoid your question. It's a, it's a lot of things. Every, every game is like that, win or lose. Jim, on your right. Uh, did the officials give you any explanation why Vanderdose wasn't ejected from the game? No. Coach, on your left, uh, you mentioned about that touchdown right before half. Felt like you got a little momentum. Then there was the, the big turnover uh, with the interception. Was Brett, without looking at the tape, did you feel he was trying to do so too much? No, that wasn't Brett's me? fault. The receiver stumbled. I don't know if, he, if they showed the replay. Um, the receiver ran down. The corner was playing off. And right before he put his foot in the ground to make his break, he stumbled. Brett put it right where it was supposed to be. That was absolutely not on Brett. It was just an unfortunate misstep at, at a long time. And, uh, you know, 
really unfortunate. But no, Brett, Brett absolutely was not at fault on that one. All right, we got two more. Jim, yeah, I know we don't want to make a big deal about the argument, but you know what you understand, your three your time here, we've never seen anything last I know you said it happens a lot, but we've never seen it. It's never happened on the sidelines during the game, and does it are you concerned it sends the wrong and again I understand the passion and all that stuff, but again it's never been this visible under you before. Does this are you concerned about any messages sent about any kind of chaos over there or anything like that? Like message to who? Oh, to, to your players who are watching, to the to, no. to the Oregon team. No, <laughs> certainly not to the players. Okay, the, the players, the players are used to that. Well, the Oregon, the Oregon team, the fans, anybody nationally perception any of that stuff? No. no. It fine. wasn't a big deal, first of all. I mean, I never even got mad. It wasn't right, a big deal. Right, right. You didn't get mad. So. You know, but you understand, we've never we've never seen it before from you. You understand why people would say something about it because we never seen it. Before. Well, now you have. So hopefully you don't again. Okay. Last one, right? Jim, I know you were talking about you know last last year's game, how the team kind of let it get away from them in the second half. I know you said you wanted to learn from that, but you know they came out and they scored three unanswered touchdowns to start the second half. Is that what do you what does that come down to? Is that an effort thing? Is that oh, is a effort? Did you see our team fight to the end there? How could you ever question our effort with the way we we played in the fourth quarter? Well, what would you diagnose what happened in the start of the second half? I mean, like I said. They, Credit is due. That's a very, very talented football team that's been together running the same system for a long, long time. You know, veteran quarterback. But our effort is always fantastic. And I don't mean to jump on you. I'm yeah. just saying effort. That the word effort, I get a little bit, I get a little bit sensitive to because effort to me means guys that are quitting, guys that aren't giving their full, you know, everything to a game. And and uh, when you see the way you know we fought to the end, I don't think you can question effort. It's it can be execution. It can be scheme. You know, a, a more advanced team than you are at this point, but it certainly was an effort. Are are there two things that maybe bind this loss and the Utah loss together? Can you see, kind of? Well, every loss is different. Every loss has its own, you know, formula. Uh, the important thing for us is to to go back and regroup and stay focused and lock out the noise and get back on track and I'm very confident that this team will find a way to do that. Right now it's very disappointing but as we go forward I think that they will find a way, we will find a way to do that. I'm, I'm very confident in that just in knowing how these young men have reacted thus far. All right. Thanks guys. Thanks.